Thrifting ain't easy, unless you're watching me. Welcome, and please pardon any and all construction noise going on upstairs and across the hall. That just can't be stopped. But neither can we. This is the Thrift Store Rundown, where we bring Hollywood home on a budget, and I'd like to welcome you to our week-long Super Slumber Syndic. While it may not have one of the more original titles that past themed weeks of reviews here have, it does carry this promise. While anyone can throw a good old fashioned sleepover, we can do one better. And we will. As you may know, no sleepover starts on a good note without some grub. That's just first and foremost. And on that note, I'd like to reintroduce you to a woman I haven't profiled on here in years. Emmy Award winning Food Network alumni, in cartoon form, Sandra Lee. I kind of swore off her semi-homemade cookbooks because to me they're a little too ubiquitous. But if there was ever a semi-homemade cookbook really worth reviewing and showing off a little bit, it's this one. Cool Kids Cooking. And within three menus, any or all of them can be used for your next sleepover. This Meredith Books publication was picked up from 2nd Avenue Trip Superstore up in Union for a buck ninety-nine. And it retails here in the States for sixteen ninety-five and twenty-two ninety-five in Canada. As you can gather here, it is a kid-centered cookbook, meaning there's a great responsibility on me to tell you what's going on in here. And what's going on before you let kids in the kitchen is first and foremost kitchen safety. Be on the lookout for these icons here. The helper icon, meaning an adult is needed for certain tasks. The scissors icon, meaning working with sharp objects. The oven mitt icon, meaning you'll be working around ovens or microwaves or stovetops. The electricity icon, requiring the use of electrical appliances. And the steak icon, Meaning you'll be working with raw eggs, poultry, meat, and or fish. So make sure you wash your hands thoroughly before, during, and after certain recipes in here. Really wash your hands before you make any recipe in here. The recipes themselves are divided into these chapters. Bike breakfast, meal mania, lazy day lunches, the first of three menus I'll be highlighting here. Everyday TV dinners, the other two being movie munchies and what really brought this all together, sleepover sensations. We also have Brainiac breaks, groovy goodies, and dynamite drinks. There's also kitchen tongue guide in here, kitchen lingo, a list of essential kitchen gadgets to have on hand, tips on cleanup. With all that in mind, we get down to business. Our first menu is Everyday TV Dinners, and we have here 10 recipes to highlight. Some of them including photographs. In fact, the photography in here complements everything scrumptiously, and it too can carry its own weight with its delicious quality and quantity. Meatloaf muffins, porcupine meatballs, Hawaiian-style burgers, chili spaghetti, did I tell you the photography was scrumptious in here, or what? Sweet and sour popcorn shrimp, chip chicken, taco rice bowl, cheesy chicken enchiladas, a baked chicken pasta, and a green and orange lasagna. All recipes in here tell you how many minutes you'll need to prep, bake, cook, let rest, stand, or cool, and how many servings um, they'll serve. Be on the lookout for the icons mentioned at the beginning of the book. Follow those icons. They also give you a list of tools you'll need and simplified instructions that everyone can follow. Next up, movie munchies. Now when I say any of these three menus I'm highlighting here can be used for a sleepover, I mean it. If you guys are going to be um, having a sleepover that's set around movies, these should be some primo movie munchies to consider. And we have here seven total. Parmesan popcorn and pretzel sticks, 
popcorn nachos, triple tostadas, pizza dogs, sub salary. That's Aunt Sandy's take on uh, Aunt's on a log. At the time, Aunt Sandy had nine nieces and nephews. I wonder if she ever had a gay son. Don't ask, it's a YouTube thing. Fantastic fruit leather and triple chocolate ice cream sandwiches. You should also keep in mind that a good many of the ingredients called for in here do mention brand names. And some of those brand name products are specialty items that you could have found at the time. This was published in 2006. Some of those specialty brand name products may not exist anymore, so I would suggest filling in the gaps that time created with the brands that work for you. Keep in mind that this is still a kid-centered cookbook, so do keep quality, health, and taste on the forefront. And finally, Sleepover Sensations. This is the main event. Eight recipes in here. They are taco pizza, potato bombs, barbecue chicken pizza, aloha quesadillas, a fondue party for cheese and chocolate fondue lovers, fruit bombs and cheesecake sandwiches. With regard to the illustrations in here, they're all cool looking. Presented in some cheap flash animation like um, cartoon characters. Hey, if you brought them to life, it would all be done in cheap flash animation. That's just the vibe I'm getting right now. But they do look cool. So, still illustrations, they should remain. <laughs> I just really love reviewing kids' cookbooks because everybody gets involved in the process and I can think of few ways that will really eclipse the bonding power that you feel every time you get together with your family. Creating something awesome in the kitchen, that's just family time at its absolute best. Kids love to cook. Sandra Lee, semi-homemade, turning cool kids everywhere into junior chefs. Discover why the kitchen is the new place to hang with friends and family. By combining 70% ready-made foods and 30% fresh ingredients, cooking can be so easy and awesome, with over 95 recipes in here. Even if you're a picky eater, you'll find lots of foods you love to nurse on. From breakfast to dinners to snacks and desserts, there are plenty of outrageous choices. Or as Aunt Sandy says, bold delicious. Now I should mention in the intro, she might have a little bit of overkill when it comes to addressing the young chef readers. Like, trying to fit in way too hard with the cool crowd. But when all is said and done, it's a solid performance. Five out of five claps. Easy. 70% store-bought, 30% homemade, 100% hot, and good nature and good taste applied to a good bulk of the recipes. It all adds up to Sandra Lee said my homemade cool kids cooking. So what are you waiting for? Keep cool and get cooking. Let me show you what's on tap for Tuesday. A penny pinching power player with proven productivity that's positively palpable. How's that for my dear peas? No cues asked. Thanks for tuning in. Just so you know, there's no limit to Pretty Hollywood Home on a budget. Please go ahead and check out another awesome review like this one by clicking here. And make sure you subscribe by clicking here. Until next time, I'll catch you, as I always do, on the flip side.